All right, I think we're recording. <clears throat> you ready, Bob? Ready. Hey, folks, this is Don Graves, and today my good guest is um, Robert Klein, a friend of mine, president and founder of the Retirement Income Center. And Robert wrote an article um, a few months ago called, Should You Do a Roth Conversion After Age 62? I'm going to link to that um, below or above somewhere to be linked to. He also, in that, there was a 20-minute video that he did with some folks that really unpacks it. It was excellent. I asked him to come on because, as you all know, that I'm um, a retirement income certified professional, but my, my specialty is reverse mortgages. And I wanted to see where reverse mortgages, retirement income, and Roth conversions all converge. So I've invited Robert to come in. Robert, welcome today. Thank you, Don. Always a pleasure to talk to you. You wrote this article. Um, a few questions for you, and I wrote them down so I wouldn't and where was that article featured at, by the way? Uh, that was in Retirement Daily. Great. And so the article, should you do a Roth conversion after age 62? Tell me why that was important. Not just should you do a Roth conversion, but what was it about age 62? So tell me why that was important. And then unpack a little bit about why maybe people should be looking at it and, and, and why they don't and what are some of the obstacles. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's so special about age 62, Don, is when you turn 63, that's when uh, the Medicare Part B premium determination begins. Even though you don't start taking Medicare benefits until 65, uh, the cost of your Medicare benefits is determined two years prior to the current year. So beginning at 63, that's when you need to focus on what's your modified adjusted gross income um, because that will directly impact your Medicare Part B premiums as well as your Part D premiums. That's what's so special about uh, what happens after age 62. And so now that, um, talk a little bit, I know most of my listeners will be financial advisors, but the Roth, uh, some advisors may not be using the Roth income, a Roth IRA conversions in the way that you talk about. Why is it important now, more than ever, in your opinion, your article, for those 62 plus to be looking at Roth conversions? What's coming or why are you so strong for this? Uh, yeah, it's important for everybody. Ideally, you want to be looking at these Roth IRA conversions well before 62, uh, you know, in your 40s, ideally, beginning then, if possible. Uh, and today, it's especially important because we have uh, historically low tax rates, which makes the uh, conversion even more attractive. Uh, that's one reason. Um, and then beyond that, to the extent you do the conversion, what uh, a lot of people forget about is once you do the conversion, all the appreciation on that converted money uh, will never be taxed again. And you're looking at you know, the time between you do the conversion right through your retirement. And then to the extent that you don't use up all your Roth funds during your lifetime, your beneficiaries will inherit those Roths. So you're looking out at it over uh, their lifetime as well. Although once they inherit it, they have to take it out in 10 years, but that's the topic of another article. Um, other reasons I'm big on it, um, once you get it out of your traditional IRA, you'll have smaller taxable distributions from your traditional IRA, uh, which means smaller RMDs, and that in turn, there's a domino effect with that to the extent you have smaller R RMDs, you can potentially cut down on the taxation of your social security benefits, although that's uh, admittedly difficult to do with the low thresholds for taxation of social security. Uh, that's one thing you can do. Uh, we talked about the impact on the Medicare Part B premiums. Uh, also, there's a thing lurking out there for uh, married individuals called the widower's tax penalty, whereby when uh, one spouse dies, and the year following the year of death, assuming the uh, surviving spouse doesn't get remarried, beginning in that year, they're subject to single tax rates and also a standard deduction that's about 50% uh, 
of the amount they were used to. And the bottom line is they're going to pay more taxes. So to the extent you can do Roth conversions while you're married, uh, that's less taxable income that's going to be taxed at potentially higher tax rates uh, down the line. Uh, not to mention the fact uh, I kind of glossed over it with the low tax rates, the current low tax rates, uh, those are definitely going to change in 2026 when the uh, current tax law sunsets after 2025, and this could happen sooner. So Robert, uh, thank you for that. When, I want you to go back and think of your clients how do you have this conversation, particularly for those over age 62? How do you introduce the subject? And what are the, the obstacles um, most common to people doing a Roth IRA conversion after age 62? Or, or you talk about the uh, a structured or staged Roth IRA conversion. What are some of the challenges or obstacles and how do we overcome that? Yeah, great question, Don. Um, most people you know, aren't thinking of, you know, the way that I'm looking at it from the perspective that if you do the Roth IRA conversion after 62, that adds, uh, in some cases, a large lump sum of money that uh, gets taxed uh, that will increase their Medicare Part B benefits. The typical obstacles are just, you know, in general taxation, people psychologically, they don't like to prepay tax. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a difficult concept for them to, to grasp, um, you know, that's, and so that's a stumbling block. But once you get into these uh, nine benefits of doing Roth IRA conversions, uh, they're more amenable to doing them. And furthermore, if you explain, when you get to the part about the Medicare Part B premiums potentially increasing, if you do a sizable Roth con uh, conversion, uh, that is, it needs to be emphasized that that's a year by year determination. And there's ways to what I call bracket manage that situation where you're doing planning and you look at the adjusted gross income that they have with and without the Roth IRA conversion and kind of plan around that. And once again, take the position that it is a year by year situation. So just because you do a large conversion in the current year, and that causes increased Medicare Part B premiums two years from now, that's not a, a permanent situation, Don. Sure. And that, that's really a great segue into the, the work I've done that you know the reverse mortgages. I've 21 years, that's been my, <laughs> my strength and specialty, and I'm uh, proud to be able to teach that in, um, at the American College. But one of the things that people don't know, and I know Robert, you know, and I want you to, to talk about that is, uh, the reverse mortgage is a federally insured loan. It, it's also, they're jumbos as well for higher home values, but allows those age 62 or over to convert a portion of their home's value, turn it into tax-free dollars, and that they can be used for a variety of planning. Now, what some people don't know is that, let's say someone's got a $400,000 home, and they turn that into a $200,000 line of credit. That line of credit has a, an appreciation factor today of around 4% or $8,000 a year compounding. And so you can use those dollars to, um, one of the things, um, when I wrote the books that you see in the background, when I first wrote them, I had nothing in there about Roth conversions. And then I met Ed Slot and some other folks, and we did some work and said, did you know you could do that, that we can use the growth on the line of credit or just the line of credit itself to pay the taxes on a structured Roth IRA conversion or uh, a, a um, staged uh, conversion. Robert, how did you get involved, kind of your thinking about reverse mortgages change, and how do you see them working into your practice, and particularly the Roth income, um, Roth IRA conversions? Yeah, it's been quite an education for me, starting with, uh, I attended an Ed Slot webinar, uh, which you spoke on, so that's how I met you. And then uh, immediately the light bulb went on and I realized, you know, what, how important it is to potentially monetize housing wealth uh, at any rate to explore it as an option, do the analysis uh, and see if it makes sense in a particular situation. 
And because I was so excited about it, I enrolled in your housing wealth certificate program and got quite the education. And, uh, and once again, that led to me writing an article. It was actually my first article in Retirement Daily about reverse mortgages and, and how they work. Um, and including, you know, I read both of your books and, you know, you discussed very well how one of the applications of a reverse mortgage is to use it for Roth IRA conversions. And that can fill the gap as far as people's reluctance to pay taxes, to prepay taxes, uh, because in a lot of situations, people if they don't have uh, a reverse mortgage, they have to draw on taxable assets and pay taxes uh, on the taxable assets to get the money to pay the taxes on the Roth contribution, on the Roth conversions rather. Uh, so to the extent you have access to uh, a HECM, the money is readily available for that purpose, number one. Number two, when you draw on it, it's, it's tax-free dollars. Um, so it, it really provides leverage for doing Roth IRA conversions that you might not have otherwise. And the dollars from the um, reverse mortgage when you use it, as we talked about um, tax bracket bumping and all of that, a lot of people don't know that. Um, just one more nickel from the wrong taxable account can blow up your tax bracket and impact your IRMA and all that provisional income. And, but the dollars from a reverse mortgage, when done well, can keep you in the same or even a lower tax bracket um, in that in particular situation. So there's a lot of um, application. Robert, I want to kind of uh, get, our, get our seats in upright position and tray tables up and, and ask you kind of um, a few landing questions. Because you've done the research, you've been to Ed Slot, you've looked at reverse mortgages, you're incorporating it into your practice in a way that appropriate. It's not always the, the right tool to use. What would you say to financial advisors who may be watching this and are reluctant to learn or incorporate reverse mortgages? What would you say to them? Uh, I would say you know, get an education about it. It's similar to, I write a lot about fixed income annuities and my experience is that financial, it's like anything else, if you don't uh, implement it in your practice, you're not currently doing it, uh, you're reluctant to, to go ahead and, and implement it in your practice. I would say you have an obligation if you're doing retirement income planning for your clients to at a minimum learn about it so you can have a conversation with them and know the pros and cons and you know then uh, you know you have more education, more knowledge to form a solid opinion. Uh, to converse with your clients because you have to realize if you're not telling your clients about uh, reverse mortgages, fixed income annuities, whatever it is, uh, somebody else's. So it behooves you to get an education about it. Um, and, you know, I think there's no better place as, uh, you know, if you want to learn about more reverse mortgages and you want to do it uh, quickly, uh, Don has some great material on it. Robert, we did not take a moment to kind of share your practice, your biography, your background, any designations you have. Um, let's take a moment, please. Um, tell us a little bit about who Robert Klein is and what your practice is and kind of um, a few things about that, please. Okay. Thank you for asking, Don. Uh, I, you know, once again, as Don said, I'm president and founder of Retirement Income Center. And I've uh, always done financial planning for a long time. Then starting with the uh, stock market downturn, if you want to call it that, back in 2007 to 2009, uh, the need for retirement income and specifically a, a sustainable source of income just really made so much sense. And so I began focusing on uh, retirement income planning, starting with uh, the American College. I did the RICP program that Don also has that designation and teaches in the program, and also began writing a blog, Retirement Income Visions, that focused on retirement income strategies. Um, so, and I found obviously my CPA background and 
tax planning has really come into play uh, and I've been able to leverage that. So um, my philosophy, uh, the philosophy of the firm is planning, managing and protecting your retirement income. So it's all about, it's a, I basically I do what several other people do, holistic retirement income planning. That's my specialty. Mm -hmm. Robert Klein, thank you so much for being my guest today, talking about um, should you do a Roth conversion after age 62? You can find a link to that article and video or above or below, depending on <laughs> how you're watching. And this is Don Graves. You can always found, find me at housingwealth.net um, for more questions. Bob Klein, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Don.